and I'm Christelle and we're Blondie's Kitchen and today we're going to show you how to make our amazing red velvet thick cookies. We are, well, I actually think we're one of the best cookie companies in the UK but I'm probably biased. I agree. But the cookie is where our heart is and we are absolutely cookie obsessed and I know everyone else is too at the moment so we're going to give you a recipe which I promise you is going to be in your recipe books for years and years and years to come. So let's get started. So we're using a KitchenAid mixer. You can do this by hand, but as Chelsea says, you really got to get going if you want to do it. So you've got to make sure that your butter is softened and don't do it by hand. Seriously, it's, it's hard work. It's hard work. So first of all, we start with softened butter. And we're going in with 250 grams of unsalted softened butter. We use unsalted butter as we like to season our own bakes with salt. However, if you don't want to do that, you can use salted butter, no problem. Then we've got 180 grams of golden caster sugar. Chucking that in. And we've got 180 grams of light brown soft sugar. So the light brown sugar is giving the cookie a fudgier texture. Mm. So this is gonna make it, when you break it open, where you see inside it's a bit fudgy and squishy instead of hard and baked. Definitely. Yeah. That's why we use two sugars for this one. If you don't have golden caster sugar, you can use regular caster sugar, no problem. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna give Turn this a really good creaming. And creaming literally means beating together the butter and sugars until they're really pale and fluffy. Sorry, I interrupted her. All right, that's done. Now we're gonna add our red food coloring. We're using Sugar Flare red food coloring. We find this one is the deepest red and when you're making this cookie, a red velvet cookie basically is a chocolate cookie with red food coloring. <laughs> Everybody... It's a slightly chocolatey cookie with red food coloring. Um, but it has a really nice texture to it as well because adding the cocoa powder to the dough makes it really delicious and fudgier also. So how much food coloring? 15 grams. 15 grams, basically a tablespoon of red food coloring. And um, this is a paste that we're using, the sugar flare paste. You don't have to use it, but like Christelle said, it really gives a good red coloring. And this is called Red Extra. So if you're looking to purchase the same one that we're using. Try and not get this on your fingers because it doesn't come out. It's really hard. So if it does go on your fingers, just use a bit of lemon juice. And we like to add the food coloring at this point once the butter and the sugars are creamed because we find it really incorporates well, don't we? Well, I just find that then the butter is turned red so mm. that when you put the flour and the cocoa powder in, you don't get the white butter that's stuck to the end and everything will become incorporated. Yeah, so it's just making sure that you get a really even finish because there's nothing worse than half being red, half not. So now we're gonna beat again once the food coloring's in. So now I'm just gonna scrape down the sides of the edge of the bowl with my spatula. You just wanna make sure every bit is getting incorporated. So if you can see like here, you wanna make sure that it's not ombre. <laughs> it's all one colour. Back down we go. It's red, it's red, it's really, really red. The next ingredient is cocoa powder. So open it up and drop it in. And we always add the cocoa powder before we add the flour, just because again, it's good to incorporate this really thoroughly and make sure every bit of the cookie is chocolatey. <gasps> and then you turn it on slowly. Uh oh. <laughs> because I swear on our last video, I said do not turn the mixer on when you've got cocoa powder in because it will go up and you even said you've got a cocoa powder beard. I'm so sorry. I'm going to get the wipes. <laughs> okay, but if that does happen, it's absolutely fine. Do not replace <gasps> any more into the recipe because I promise you this is going to be hardly any grams and if you add in, you might add in too much which then would affect the recipe. So Chelsea's going to clean this up. I'm going to clean it up, I promise. Cocoa powder travels so far, so like this, it's like icing sugar. Goes everywhere. We've taken it on a journey. Sorry. It's okay. Cocoa powder. So, yes? yes. Now we're allowed to speed no, up. No, no. So I like 
don't, I can't tell. Don't talk <laughs> the mixes on. I like to add the cocoa powder just before the eggs with this recipe because I like to make sure that it's fully combined with the red food colouring. Beautiful. So now we're going in with two eggs. Beautiful. I'll lift this up. One for me, one for you. Ooh, and then you can sound. start to see here. Then you can start to see the red food colouring really becoming apparent. Oh, and we're going to get our vanilla in at the same time as our eggs. Again, we're using vanilla paste um, instead of essence or extract. We just find it has a much deeper flavour um, to get every last bit in there. And you can get vanilla paste from your local supermarket, hopefully. And if you can't, there's always the internet. <laughs> so slightly slower to begin with, with the eggs going in. And one thing that's so important well, is- you weren't meant to speak when <laughs> the mixer was on. <laughs> Sorry, but this is important for everyone to know. You need to really, really beat, um, oh. you need to really, really beat um, the eggs in thoroughly. So just as long as you were creaming the butter and sugars, you need to cream at the same time with the eggs once they're in. I like to beat it, beat it. <laughs> wow. Fluffy. Fluffy? And once it's really fluffy like this, then you know you're ready to go in with your flour. We're adding plain flour. With one tablespoon of baking powder. Perfect. If you don't have any plain flour at home, but you have self-raising flour, feel free to use that instead of the plain with the baking powder. I'm gonna add in some salt. We season our sweet bakes and our savory bakes, and it is so important. But again, if you use salted butter, no need to add in your own salt. And I'm not doing this. I'll do it slowly. Thank you. Speed one. <laughs> I just had a vision of it. Now we have cookie dough. And this is the exact texture we're looking for. So it's still a bit sticky, um, but it's all one. It's all one what? One consistency. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's basically the consistency you're looking for is it's a little bit fudgy. Exactly. So when you touch it, it goes a bit darker. Yeah, and it's sort of indents with your finger. It doesn't get stuck. Exactly. So now we're gonna add in white chocolate chunks and we're gonna use half of our chocolate now. So half is going in and the other half is gonna be for finishing your cookies so everyone can see the stunning contrast between the red and the white. It's very festive almost this. It's very American. I said festive. Very American. <laughs> you can eat this all year round though. I mean, red velvet. When's red velvet meant to be served? Christmas. All year round, but festive. It is festive. For red when? and white. For when? It's <laughs> very festive, yeah, it's very American. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Sorry. So American right now. Wow. Okay, so now you're gonna get your hands a bit dirty. So Push now it down. Cookie dough. You don't have to get your hands in, but who doesn't want to get their hands in? So much fun. And don't eat this raw, this whole bowl, even though you might be tempted to, because it does contain raw egg. However, if you do want some raw edible cookie dough and you're in London, please visit us in Selfridges Food Hall where you can find our cookie bar where we serve raw edible cookie dough by the tub and it's incredible. Now we're gonna clean up and show you how we boil our cookies. We've just cleaned up and now we're gonna show you how we make sure all of our cookies not only taste good, but look incredible. So we're gonna weigh every single cookie so the, same the same weight. So they're exactly the same. Because it's all about consistency. And at Blondie's Kitchen, if someone received a cookie from us that was slightly smaller than the other, that would not be acceptable. So the best way to do this, even if you're at home, is to weigh every single one so you have no one arguing over which cookie they're gonna get. So we weigh our cookies for this recipe for 120 grams per bowl. So 120 grams. And I wanna see that this is white chocolate too, but because it's a dark cookie, the white chocolate's encased inside. So it's I'm gonna, getting lost. So I'm gonna put a few chocolate chips on Around. the outside, bowl it into a bowl. So when this melts, you're gonna see the white chocolate on top melt down. And it's all about eating with your eyes. And not only that, it's double the amount of chocolate, so it tastes even better. 
So we're weighing all of these out the same way, 120 grams each, give or take. So at the end, you should have 12 cookies, but if you've only got 11 or you've got 12 and a bit, you can either bake the extra off for yourself or just attach it to other parts of each cookie to round up mm -hmm. the amount. And then, sadly, we don't bake these straight away. Sorry to disappoint, guys. Um, anyone that follows us on Instagram, at Blondie's Kitchen, and knows that we are a cookie bakery that specialise in American-style cookies, will know that the key to a perfectly baked cookie is chilling your cookie dough for at least 24 hours once shaped. They mature. Exactly. Like us. Like us. They get better with age. So when they're in the fridge overnight, they're having a good old rest, the dough is relaxing, and the flavors are just developing. So you really, really, really don't wanna miss this step out. Also, if you were to bake them right now, I guarantee you they will not bake completely round. They will have potential butter pockets through them. Um, and they just won't look professional. So if you wanna be professional, make them look incredible, follow our tips. And not only that, you can keep them in the fridge for up to a week, if you like, and you can freeze them for up to three months. So totally up to you. And once baked, you can also freeze them for up to three months. I've got these in my freezer and I just pop them in for 15 minutes Perfect. and they're done. So it's like doing, you know how people do meal prep? Yeah. I do my cookies. Cookie prep, it's a thing. We're making it a, a thing. thing. It's now a thing. Every little helps. So now we're just getting a spatula to get the last bits out of the bowl because this might look like not much at all, but you will find there's a whole cookie in there. <gasps> Got my spatula. Get the last one out. So I'm gonna scrape the whole bowl. It might not look like you've got a cookie in there. I just said that. And that's the last one. There we go, we've got 12 cookies. Amazing, and then when you've got your 12 cookies ready, pop them on a plate um, or anything that fits in your fridge and cover it with cling film and leave it to rest. Look what we've got over here. So we've got our chilled red velvet cookie dough balls ready to bake. They look amazing. And now we've got our oven preheated at 175 degrees. And we're gonna pop these on a tray spaced apart and bake them. Should we bake two lots of them? Yes. So if you've got two trays, great, but we've only got one, so we're gonna do ours in two batches. So I would only bake six cookies on this tray. You want your cookies to be round and not square. Cookie is a round shape. Um, so we're gonna leave a space to allow them to grow in the oven. So I would give them about, we always say a fistful, but a depends how big your fists are. Your fist is, but <laughs> it's about one of ours, but two inches apart. Perfect, and make sure you're baking on parchment or anything non-stick because you wanna be able to lift them off once baked. So let's get them in. And these are gonna take about 15 to 18 minutes, depending on how you like them. We're gonna check them after 15. Ready? Are ready? It's gonna get them go. out. Yeah. Wow. They're so red. Do you know sometimes with like red velvet cookies, they never, they don't stay the, the colour. Smell just hit me in the face. They look perfect. Look at them. They're perfectly round. Look at that crack of the white chocolate. So before we were speaking about how we like to place them a little bit apart, the reason is, can you see how they're not touching and they haven't turned into squares? They're <laughs> perfectly baked onto this tray. So always keep them apart. But you've got to let these cool now. I know you want to eat them, we do too, but you have to let them cool because you won't be able to pick this up and you want to enjoy every single moment. You've just put all that time into making them this perfect. You've got to make it perfect when you eat it too. So leave them to cool for about five to 10 minutes before you attempt picking one off of the grease proof. You can dunk them in milk, eat them straight away, or you can pop them in an airtight container once completely cooled and save them for later. Wow, these are still warm. Perfection. So I'm gonna show you what they look like inside because I promise you this is too good to miss this. Yum perfectly fluffy in the middle with that melting white chocolate. 
That's exactly what you want to say. <sighs> Come on. Uh, of course. And this is how you make the best red velvet white chocolate Blondie's Kitchen cookies. We hope you enjoy. And guys, if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Down here. And you can see in the comments, we've got the full recipe listed below for you. And we cannot wait to see how yours bake.